Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 2018 in Frankfurt, Germany. And today I'm here with Jack Wells and Duncan from NVIDIA. Jack, let, let's start with you. I heard about this thing called CAR, the Center for Application Acceleration Readiness. What is that and who is it for? So CAR, the Center for Accelerated Application Readiness, is the way we get applications ready to run early on in the life of a new supercomputer. So we partner with key developers of scientific codes um, to work on their codes to get them ready to go for science on day one. So in, in this sense, it's for our user community. And to quote um, a famous hockey player, it's uh, the way you want to skate to where the puck is going to be. You want to prepare your code to run on the computer when it's ready to go. Well, Duncan, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, how do you get users on this machine and get their codes ported? How do they do it? Well, first of all, I have to thank Oak Ridge because you know, they're a founding member of OpenACC. And with them, we conceived of an idea of a hackathon, which was uh, basically an event where you could bring your own code and we could work with teams in, in kind of a competition format to, yeah. to prove out uh, what acceleration they could get very quickly, like within a week. We've now trained 450 developers in this way. We've accelerated close to 125 codes in this way. And um, with the support of PGI, we've also released a free edition of OpenACC that anyone that can go and download. And then finally, you know, our brag sheet of success around OpenACC we're standing in front of where, you know, the major top five HPC codes are actually uh, developed in part using OpenACC. So Jack, I can't let you go without congratulating you on Summit, the world's fastest supercomputer that's now at Oak Ridge. I wanted to ask you about AI. I heard this thing described as an AI supercomputer. Uh, is that an accurate description? Um, yes, I think it is. Um, we think the machine is going to be very good for data intensive workloads, um, data analytics and machine learning. Much of it's driven by the huge need that experimental and observational science projects have for computing. Mm -hmm. Over the last 10 years, because of the growth of data sets, their needs have been sort of pushed off the desktop and into the data center, off across broad areas of science and engineering. You're familiar with the famous hockey stick growth curves. Many, many different disciplines have such demonstrations of the growth of their data requirements. When we did our application requirement study in 2013, preparing for Summit, um, the number one thing that our users told us was that they needed more bandwidth, right? In previous requirement surveys, it was always peak node flops that we were asked to deliver. Well, the Summit machine, it delivers a lot of bandwidth and to move lots of data around. And that's what you need to do for data analytics. That's what you need to do for deep learning frameworks. So, we are expecting and indeed uh, seeing a growth in those kinds of requirements. To be sure, our uh, dominant use mode is still simulation science, yeah. uh, but the fastest growing use mode is deep learning, yeah. right? Yeah. And when the scientists are beginning to look at these opportunities, they're actually integrating all of these into their individual applications. Yeah. And I think it's going to be very positive for uh, the expansion of artificial intelligence that experts in those areas get exposure to interesting and complex and actually impactful science data. Because yeah, yeah. in the end, that's what it's about, right? This is about the science. It's right? about the outcomes. It's about the problems that we can solve. The fact that the tools are broadly useful is very important because it means that we can bring tremendous expertise in computer science, mathematics, and engineering to bear on these platforms.